is Sonia Moline. Many of you know me already. I've worked with a lot of you. I'm the Vice President of Technology Source, and I come to Technology Source after a pretty wonderful career as a IT director and for many years hiring a lot of the different providers we have at Technology Source. <clears throat> then I had the fortune to get hired by one of my vendors and then that vendor made me their chief sales and marketing officer so I served them for five years and that was a cloud computing company called Effortless Office. And I found out about Technology Source by an advisor and the advisors from Technology Source. So it was really a great company for me to learn about and they introduced me to this whole way of selling our products and services at wholesale prices with higher end customer service and faster onboarding and those types of things. And so that's how I found out about Technology Source. So today we're going to talk about the following. We just had some introductions and then we're going to hear from one of our senior advisors, Stephanie Mountain, and then we're going to hear from one of our providers and that is CCI. And then we will take your questions. So again, please use that chat box. It really helps us to know what you're thinking and help answer questions as we go. All right. Well, without further ado, I want to introduce to you, Ms. Stephanie Mountain. Stephanie is an enterprise sales professional with a proven record of exceeding performance goals and her 15 year career spans the sales and marketing world. She has come to us from de software development firms, established consumer technology companies, tech startups and consulting firms. She has a passion for innovation in technology and helping companies become more efficient. She brings a strategic selling approach to her work with her customers, including leveraging social media and collaborative tools to be more agile and responsive. She is passionate about technology and it's how it can help businesses grow. Stephanie completed her undergraduate degree in communication studies at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. She went on to enter business school at the University of Kansas while working full-time and traveling extensively for Garmin International. Her foreign language and studies include Spanish, German, Mandarin, French, definitely speak to her in all those languages. She is born and raised outside of Wichita, Kansas, and she has been based in Southern California since 2012. She's a donor to the American Red Cross, a volunteer at the food pantry, her local food pantry in Laguna Beach. And some fun facts about Stephanie that I love is you can certainly have a conversation with her where she can hold her own on pretty in-depth conversations about cryptocurrency. She loves to spend time with her partner hiking and mountain biking and road biking, and they have a new puppy. So I'll let you take it away, Stephanie. Thank you so much. And where are you joining us today from? Laguna? So I'm actually at the Technology Source headquarters here in Santa Ana. I do live and work out of Laguna Beach okay. uh, from home because we all have the ability to work remotely quite often. But yeah, today I'm here at our HQ and just wanted to talk with you guys a bit about, you know, kind of the advisor role and, and what it is that we do to try to provide value to our clients. So typically what I kind of try to tell people is as advisors, we act as a concierge to a CIO or a VP of technology and we just try to help them kind of identify what their product roadmap looks like at least for the next year and then really map out a strategy around those and work with our partners that are part of our portfolio to really kind of strategically select the right partner give them the options to choose from shop around and get the best pricing so we we really like to act as a concierge for a cio so with that being said some of the client experiences that i've had so far have been pretty exciting i have a 15-year background in sales and marketing for technology companies but i've never worked in a position where i could work with so many companies kind of at once so it's been really exciting a few of my experiences include a local eco-friendly kind of consumer products companies they're making utensils and cutlery that are biodegradable so a really cool connection was made there. I was able to set them up with one of our providers for some of the VoIP phones that they needed. They wanted the solution pretty quickly and our provider came in very quickly with the right quote at the right time and we got that set up. Another one that I've had experience with is a local insurance startup and they are looking for desktop as a service. In fact, Sonia, you've helped me with that one and, and picking the right provider on that one. So. We've again looked at our portfolio and, and tried to identify who's the right solution and who's the right team to help them. And then one of the other ones I can think of kind of right offhand is a local dental company here in Southern California making dental equipment. 
and we're working with them actually on software development. So they need extra software development for their team. And we've got a partner within our portfolio that can really come in and, and help them. So we're kind of matching those two. So that's really our role here. As far as marketing efforts, we come to you weekly. Actually, Sonia, hats off to you for this awesome opportunity to connect with our clients and provide value every week on these virtual roundtable sessions. We've, we're posting content constantly to our YouTube channel. We've got content that we're providing on our and also our LinkedIn profiles. So basically we're taking kind of that customer journey approach, driving people to content that we're putting out there so that we can be resourceful as opposed to just, you know, traditionally salesy. We want to provide the resources and the information that clients need and whatever kind of situations they're dealing with, especially at these times, and kind of get the right message to the right people and act as a resource and then develop that relationship from there. Next item being kind of content creation and outreach efforts. I kind of talked about that a little bit, this being one of them. And the next item I listed there is solutions efforts. So basically really looking across our portfolio of relationships and trying to identify, there may be two or three different companies that provide the same solution, but they may or may not have the full package of what that company needs. So we can kind of inform the client why this provider might be a little bit better than this provider. We work remotely. Most of our team kind of has the ability to work remotely. So oftentimes I will work from my home in Laguna and we've been set up for that for quite a while. So it's kind of interesting to be able to talk with clients who are kind of going through that now that maybe haven't been doing that for the last several years and they're either forced to do it or they're embracing it due to COVID. So a lot of us can speak from experience there. I know my, myself, I've been working remotely for nearly all of my career. And then you know, my last item there is just following your strengths. I think, you know, one thing to say about technology source is that coming in as an advisor, we're able to kind of follow our strengths. So for myself, I have way more experience on the software development side than, than I do the networking side. And so I can work with someone on our team like Sonia, who maybe has strengths in areas that I'm a bit weaker. And I can kind of focus on clients that I can speak to directly about coding and development and different coding languages and agile processes and things like that. But if there are some more questions on desktop as a service or networking, I can rely on and ask anyone on our team very quickly to help me kind of have that add value to that conversation. So that's a quick overview and a kind of a snapshot of what we do here as an advisor. And, you know, thanks for the opportunity and the introduction and I'm glad to be here to learn more about pricing models for today. Thank you, Stephanie. That was really good. Do we have any questions from our audience on the advisory program? And while we're waiting on those questions to come in, one thing I just, I always like to equate things to food because I love, I'm a, I'm a foodie. And the way, one of the things I look at the way technology source works is it's kind of like going to a restaurant the first time, right? And you end up ordering things that you maybe wouldn't order the second time. And you end up maybe not ordering the combinations that go well together or the right pairing. But if you went to that restaurant with somebody who's been going there for 20 years, your experience would be very different. And that's kind of how I look at technology source. We've been, in, been sitting at this table collectively for many, many years as a team. And we have seen deployments go swimmingly well, and we've seen them go not so well. And so we kind of know what to order, when to order it, what pairs well with other things. And so that's one of the things I really love is that we have this variety of disciplines that really coalesce together where we can all come together. We've got different advisors for different products and services and all, like Stephanie said, working remotely throughout the world, really, mostly in the United States. It's exciting. And I, I love the, the thought that we can come together and help businesses, organizations, nonprofits, profits going through these changes and continuously be there for them as they as we set the table for them again and again to find the right products and services that they need to grow their business or just to win in general and right now it may be just to stay afloat or even to cut costs and so before we go into our panelists today from CCI I wanted to talk about that a little bit and that's cutting costs and so this slide is to remind me one more time to remind you that you can have questions and answers at this time. So if you'd like to ask our panelists questions, please just do that and we will answer them as we go. Okay. So a little bit about Technology Source. We have over 3,500 happy customers serving over 60 different countries and we have over 200 
service providers that are out there, some of them on this slide. We also have CCI, who we'll get to hear from today. And we have over 200 advisors like Stephanie who are out there serving our customers. And um, it's just a really cool company, been around for over 20 years. One of the things that we like to talk about at Technology Source is sort of a visualization. And I'm so grateful for visualizations. In fact, I learned recently that the periodic table of elements came in a dream. And so I like to think that this sort of came to us. I was actually driving and we were chatting on the phone with the executives and we were, we were like, how can we visualize all of the products and services that we have at Technology Source? And so we thought, hey, why not put it in this beautiful chart here, the periodic table of business elements of success is what we call it. So you can see that on our website and it's actually interactive. You can click on this on our website and it takes you to each section on our services page. So now I wanted to talk a really about this cutting IT costs in the time of COVID because this is on mind for a lot of people. So as COVID-19 continues to spread, so do work from home environments and they are remaining the predominant place for video chats, working, meetings, learning, strategizing, communicating. And so we at Technology Source are continuing to support organizations who are facing these huge challenges to their business operations. While it is most important, obviously, right now to meet the humanitarian crises that are happening around us, it's also very important for organizations to consider that we may be facing a very large economic downturn. And so while most leaders are focused on coping with operational challenges from the crisis, many are now turning to squarely look at their IT and productivity cost management. So in reviewing cost operations, these assessments need to be made strategically, and we need to understand where cost cuts can be made. I say cuts, but I also want to mention investments. Right, so it's not, not the time just for cuts, but also potentially investments, and we'll go into that a little bit more why. We need to be fast, but we also need to be smart, and that's why we always have this plan for recovery here, because we don't want knee-jerk reactions. We want to make investments and cost cuts that are going to also get us through to the recovery, because there will be a recovery. In many cases, the first round of cuts for businesses has already been made, some of them forced, right? We have staff no longer in place for many organizations. We have tools that have been dropped because they aren't in use anymore. And these cost management efforts have likely fallen short of what can be accomplished with the right strategic planning. So there's three things that at Technology Source we've identified that could be important for you to consider. So first of all, defining your portfolio of cost reduction measures. So you'll need to understand the full range of measures that can be in place for you. Leaders can proactively develop a clear point of view at which costs to cut and then open those up for conversation with their executives and their leadership teams. You might be surprised, and this is one I'm always surprised when I'm working with a customer and we look at upgrades to their systems that actually save them money. That's always to me a surprise. And it's a happy surprise, right? One of those happy surprises. So you might want to consider looking at some upgrades and then also improving usability at the same time. Even staffing, archiving data, automation, those are things to consider when you're looking at that full portfolio, right? All those elements of success, those actually can be cost-saving measures. The next thing, number two, is taking advantage of the elasticity of technology. This is something I've always loved about technology is that its ability to expand and contract is always present. A significant IT spend can be saved by taking measures that leverage the flexibility of your system. This might include reducing demand volume or even service level agreements, eliminating discretionary spending, delaying any non-essential projects, things that you can kind of put off, and then also decommissioning applications that are no longer really needed right now for whatever reason. And I'm always surprised at some of the applications we discover when we're doing discovery with, with clients. We'll find applications that maybe are completely not in use or haven't been in use for months or years. And also investing in business productivity, right? This is the next normal. So leaders need to balance cost reduction efforts with the need of the changed business model. This is the model for the new normal. Now I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Chris Goss, the CEO and founder of CCI. 
Now, Mr. Goss has had over 29 years of telecommunications experience. Mr. Goss started his career at Allnet, who was purchased by Frontier Communications and later purchased by Global Crossing. He spent four years there while he worked his way up from account executive to district manager. Then he joined Southwest Communications, a small wholesale telecommunications company and partner for multi vendors for multiple providers as the vice president of sales. During his management stay at Southwest Communications, he was instrumental with increasing sales from less than 3 million to over 24 million in annual sales. In 2003, Mr. Goss received his BA of Science in Public Relations from Northwest Missouri State University in 1991. He and his wife, Michelle, have three children, Vanessa, Hannah, Jack, and their family resides in Holiday, Utah. Mr. Goss strengths lie in his knowledge and dedicated services for WAN, IP, VPN, voice services, and of course, building customer relationships one at a time, which is his life's motto that he lives by. So how are you today, Mr. Goss, Chris, and where are you joining us today? And by the way, everybody, Chris has Gene's name, but he's really in the red right there. You can't miss him. So this is Chris. I'm doing great. Boy, I'll tell you what, you read that bio, and I think that's why I have all this gray on my beard. It's been a while I've been in telecommunications, but it's been a great ride. We've really enjoyed. I started CCI. 16 years later, here we are. We're doing great. We're definitely expanding. We're doing some things. We're on a growth front in the telecommunications industry, and I'm really glad to be here. Great. Well, that's good to hear. Well, I'd like you to kind of tell us more about CCI, but before that, could you just tell us, Chris, what are you guys doing right now in response to COVID and how are you helping customers? I mean, we just talked about cost cutting. Is that something that is important to you guys? Well, I think cost cutting is definitely important to everybody out there. In this world, you know, we're doing the video conferences right now. We're doing a lot of those. I think what we've done to help customers, I mean, obviously more than half our company is just like you guys are working remotely. As you can see, John and Gene here on the screen, we have the brick background. We're in our offices here, but more than half of our company is VPNing, tunneling into the, to the networks. We are remotely forwarding phones and doing things, which we've been helping out a lot of customers to do. We've recently, I don't know if we're going to go, Gene's going to go through this with you, but we are on a NetSapien platform as far as a hosted PBX product. We've helped a lot of customers out there to basically transfer phone lines. If they were on ISDN PRI circuits, we have transferred their numbers, pushed them back, moved them over to a VPN so that we can get their, and get their calls from home. So we've done a lot of things like that. We've increased some bandwidth to customers. We are a big wireless shop as well, so we've put in some wireless devices for some of our employees or customers that need them. We're definitely evolving with the times and changing with the times. Great. Great. Well, tell us a little bit more about CCI, and we'd love for you guys to, to kick it off. Oh, and I'll, I'll introduce you too, Gene, since you're here. Say good morning to, and afternoon. Hey, Can you hear us okay, Gene? Hi. Okay, good. Well, Gene has 30 years of telecom experience and has worked both in operations, sales, and marketing roles. And prior to joining CCI in 2008, he was a carrier account executive with Willtel Communications and most recently XO Communications, where his focus was on maximizing relationships with large carriers such as Time Warner, Telecom McCloyd USA, Electric Lightwave Incorporated, to name a few. Previous 11 years were spent in management of various sales teams in the Salt Lake Valley for companies such as Access Long Distance, now Paytech, and Equitone and Integra Telecom. On a national level, Gene also served as a Senior Director of Operations for Teltrust Communications. So very long and varied career. We are so excited to have you here today as the Director of Agent Sales with CCI. So I'll let you guys take it off, share what CCI is and does, and I know our advisors are happily working away with you, but some of the customers would like to know more about what you guys do. Sounds great. Thank you so much. We're excited about our partnership with Technology Source. We've been partners for quite a long time. I was going back through some of our lists with the clients that we serve through our partnership with you guys and their companies that we've had online for 10 to 15 years. And a big reason for that is, is the philosophy that Chris brought to the company when he started CCI, and that's building customers for life. We've been tremendously successful in doing that. And those relationships that you guys have brought to CCI, we've been able to grow and expand together. One of the reasons why why we're on the call today, and, and, and again, very excited to be here. I'm going to go ahead and, and share the screen and, and give you guys a, a quick presentation on who CCI is and kind of what we do. Okay. Perfect. Yes. 
Okay. As I mentioned earlier, we talk about service and support and value with CCI Communications. And if, if you look at if you look at CCI and you kind of think of us, you know, we're talking about wholesale services right now. For a long time, we're kind of known in the industry as the wholesale provider to the enterprise space. And what the reason for that is, you kind of can, you could compare us to kind of like a Costco model. If you go into Costco and you're going to go buy, you're going to buy your your bulk services, and, and Costco is out there and focuses on buying as much as they possibly can doing that in a bulk fashion and then taking those savings and passing them back on to their end users. We do the same thing in the telecom space. We go out, we, we, enter, we enter into contracts with companies such as Verizon, companies such as CenturyLink and AT&T. We create large bulk buy philosophies with those providers. We take the minutes and we take the data services and we take the savings that we can offer and pass them back to our end users. So at the end of the day, instead of spending a tremendous amount of money in the enterprise space, you're getting sort of a wholesale cost model all with enterprise services, sales and support on the back end. That's how we support our agent groups. That's how we support our customer service groups. CCI started in 2003. We're out of Salt Lake City. You guys saw Chris Gose earlier and his other partner is, is Chris Natoli. What happened was Chris is he had Southwest Communications in Kansas City, Missouri. I know that'll bring some, some memories back for you, Stephanie. So you guys are two, two Missouriites, but anyhow, Chris was with a company called Southwest Communications, as, as you had mentioned earlier, the, the way that he had grown that company. His wife was from Salt Lake City, Utah. Her mom was, was diagnosed with cancer. She had a couple of years to live and Chris decided he was gonna move back to Salt Lake City, take Michelle back and take the kids back and spend as much time as they could with her mom. When he got here, fell in love with the place, saw the value that Salt Lake City had to offer and how he could raise a family here and decided he might wanna just stay here. So he sat down with Chris Natoli, who owned a company called CCI Communications talked about his desire to start up an enterprise solutions partner company, took what Chris was, had done, maximized his contract negotiations, and they basically sat down and put together a 50-50 partnership on a piece of paper and, and became partners And CCI Network Services, then became an arm of CCI Communications. Began selling enterprise companies through agent channels to the, to the market again in 2003. What started out as just a startup company then has now grown to a company that will probably build close to $40 million in revenue this year, primarily focusing on medium to large enterprise relationships with our, with our agent partners that are out there. So when you hear of CCI, you'll see us more of a contact center, solutions provider, people that are working with, with medium-sized business companies. We have various relationships with the likes of trucking facilities, healthcare facilities, financial institutions, and we'll get into that in a little bit. And we'll talk about some of the things we've done for those guys all, all the while through this through this time in the virus. Jeff Parsons, our chief operating officer, he's been with us since 2005 and has over 29 years of experience in the telecom industry. Jeff and I have known each other from previous lives at Access Long Distance and also in college. We all kind of came together and, and started working together at CCI Network Services. As I said, Chris started in 2003, Jeff in 2005. I joined the company in 2008. Why CCI? What are, what are the value propositions that we offer to the market space? First and foremost, we do believe in customer service and creating customers for life. We mentioned our relationship with you guys spans back to about the time that Chris started the company and some of the companies that we have on board right now have been customers of ours for the last 10 to 15 years through our relationships with you guys. And the reason they stay with us is because we do provide a high level of customer service. Our focus is maintaining those relationships for life and doing as much as we can to make sure we're staying as cost efficient as possible and to make sure that we're putting them on multiple carrier networks. And one of the unique things about CCI is we can take our carrier relationships and provide you an array of different carriers all on one building platform. So for example, you may have a customer out there that, that's got locations on the East Coast, locations on the West Coast, locations in the Midwest, and they have internet access at each of those locations. They wanna be able to take advantage of the most cost effective plan they can in each of those regions but they don't want to have get three or four or five different bills and have to pay and go through three or, three or four different, different accounting principles to get those done. So what we do is we go out and we negotiate solutions, say for, uh, for example, on the East Coast, Verizon is a very strong play in the, in the Eastern Seaboard. So we're going to get a very cost-effective plan for Verizon there. In the Midwest, it might be AT&T. On the West Coast, it might be Central. So we'll go out and, and, and take those solutions. We'll create and negotiate contracts for our customers where they may be using Verizon in one part of the country, level three in one part of the country and AT&T in another part of the country. They'll get all those services on one invoice. 
we'll have an inventory that's based on all those services and we'll be able to manage and manage that solution for those guys while they're being able to take advantage of the most cost effective plan on each of those regions with one person to contact and one person to get in touch with in, in, ter in terms of billing in terms of provisioning and everything else so we're managing that for them on a, on a global scale whether it's internationally or nationally within cci's platform and giving them a chance to have one person to talk to one person to provide their service with so we allow them to focus on what they do best in the marketplace whether it's selling insurance whether it's service serving people from a transportation perspective whether it's logistics managing whatever the case may be we take the telecommunications we manage that for them and allow them to focus on what they do best they allow us to focus on what we do best to help them save money and increase their efficiencies. These are some of the partners that we work with. And you'll notice across the top, you see Verizon, you see CenturyLink, and now Level 3 along with CenturyLink and AT&T from an international perspective, PC, PCCW Global. Our focus is to make sure that we're giving you the best level of service we can with the, with Tier 1 carrier provision, Tier 1 carrier networks, I should say. From a voice perspective, our primary focus is going to be Verizon, CenturyLink, and Level 3, and a little bit of AT&T on, on the back end of that as well. We try to make sure that we're keeping our customers in a tier one voice solution perspective so that they're getting high call completions, they're getting the kind of call quality that they expect to get in the enterprise space. One of the things that we're able to do is take those services and combine them into a plan that allows you to utilize those carriers through a CCI network offering, and you can utilize multiple networks. That also gives you the ability to increase your network efficiencies by utilizing multiple carrier networks. You're able to process calls on both Verizon, CenturyLink, and Level 3. You can see some other carriers that customers that we work with as well out there in the marketplace for some of our, for some of our data services and also for our, our hosted PBX platform and also some co-location. These are some case studies of some of the companies that we work with right now and some of the things that we've been able to do. If you look at the first one, the national credit card provider, what we did was we took their we took their solution and we did an analysis and we decided that the best thing we could do for them was put them in a two, in a dual carrier solution with both Verizon and CenturyLink. We designed the network and built the least cost routing tables for the bank within the SMS database. So we'll go into the SMS database in, in a little bit so we can talk about how we work with the SMS database and how we leverage our relationship to make sure we get great redundancy across the backbone. But by using two carriers, leveraging our spend with the with with the carriers that we work with. We were able to drive their costs down significantly. We saved them over a million dollars in their voice telecommunication spend on an annual basis. And also provided them additional network interfaces so they had so they had great disaster recovery across their backbone. When a customer's out there and they're making a phone call and we're providing we're providing them across dual care networks, if there's an issue on one carrier's network, we see that issue and we switch switch those calls over to the other care network so their stuff calls stay up and operational. For example, let's say that you're processing calls and Verizon has a network out. If I'm on the Verizon network, utilizing Verizon services, I'm down to Verizon get me back up. With the CCI relationship, what I can do is take those calls and provision those calls over to the level three network or CenturyLink network and make sure those calls stay up and operational by just alerting the SMS database on transferring calls. Hey, take these calls that are being processed through us on Verizon right now and submit those calls over to level three and CenturyLink and process those calls on this network until I tell you to move those calls back. So the customer is able to keep their calls up and keep their operations up, drive their costs down, while not only saving money, but increasing their talk time with their customers, making sure they're getting their calls in and out. Something else we do is we go the extra mile for our customers in, in customer service and work on doing things like what we did for this national trucking company. CR England is one of the largest refrigerating trucking companies in the, in, in the world, and you'll see those guys all across the country as you're driving on the freeway. Well, they support, they support Walmarts worldwide, nationwide, I should say. And they'll go into a site, and Walmart will put a store up, and they'll, they'll say, look, we got to get transportation in there. we gotta get our, we got to get our trucks in there, and they'll put, a, they'll, put a, they'll put a satellite site up and try to get service in as quickly as they can. A good example of this is, that, is what you see in the second paragraph. We put in a temporary Verizon mobile 4G wireless network and put it up in three days and allowed them to start their production in their office as quickly as they possibly could. While we ordered the direct internet in access for those guys, they were able to operate efficiently and effectively in a matter of three days. And then a month later, we put in the, we put in the wireline services and got them up and operational on an internet, on an internet connection. 
something they said here that I think is kind of unique is we always go the extra mile when it comes to anything in telecommunications. We do believe we have the best customer service in the telecom business and CR Ingle will mention that as well as you can see there. We are 24 seven, any time of day or night, we're with our customers. So we do believe that best customer service and response by any telecom provider in the industry is a, is a true and concise statement about it. You see here with the national healthcare provider, this is the same thing we talked about earlier when we push traffic from one carrier to the other to make sure that they had their operations up and, 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 uh, and accessible to their customers on a nationwide basis. Again, because there was an outage in, in, in the network and Verizon had gone down, we pushed those calls over to a CenturyLink solution and kept those calls up and operational. Well, Verizon fixed their problem. As soon as Verizon fixed their problem, we moved those calls back. And we'll go into, the, into, into that in a little bit and show you guys exactly how, how that occurs. Some of the things that we sell, obviously voice over IP, long distance. Conference calling has been a big plus for us with the onslaught of, of the coronavirus. A lot of our customers have needed to have conference calls and, and because so many guys are working remote, they wanna be able to stay in touch and stay close to each other. And our audio platform is very user friendly. It's a toll-free dial-in number, a moderator code, a passcode for those wanting to dial in. We can have up, we can have conferences up to 300 people at a time processing those calls. So we found conference calling to be a pretty big play in the last couple of months as customers have had to go has had to have had to go out and work work on being remote. It's also very cost-effective. I mean, because we have such a high volume buy, we're able to get a pretty cost-effective conference calling platform out to people. Guys are used to spending significant dollars and, and, and you know, they're paying maybe 10 cents a minute for a call. They're able to do that a lot less with CCI based on how we buy our services. We do have co-location. We actually have four diverse POPs across the country. And one of the reasons that we did this was to make sure we were not only geographically diverse, but also environmentally sound. We have POPs in Salt Lake City, we're at Switch in Vegas, we're in Richardson, Texas at Equinix, and we're also in, in Ashburn, Virginia at Digital Realty. So we set ourselves up to give ourselves an array of disaster recovery so that when we had issues that there was ever any, anything ever to occur in a marketplace like Salt Lake City, we automatically just roll our network over to our Vegas operation that rolls to our Texas operation that rolls to our Ashburn operation. So we maintain those four different diverse POPs and also can provide co-location at those services as well. We do local services, both in a SIP realm and a local PRI realm. Our private line service, it's the same thing. It's a bulk buy philosophy, the same as our voice and our DIA services are. Hosted PBX and cloud call center is one thing that we've also been tremendously successful in with the onslaught of this virus. For example, our company alone, when this hit, we all just, for, for the most part, several of us went remote and I just transferred my hosted solution onto my mobile phone, onto my computer at home. We were up and operational and my office space at home is the same as my office space here. So whether I wanna be in my home office or in my office here, I'm doing the same thing and I'm seeing the exact same thing. And we're able to operate pretty efficiently as a company. Custom billing is a, is a pretty big application for us. And as I mentioned earlier, we can take multiple carriers, put them on one invoice, provide you one person to contact in terms of servicing that solution. And I think that's been a big, big plus for our customers because what they can find is they can maximize their cost efficiencies. They can maximize their network efficiencies. They can do it with one invoice, with one person to work with in accounting. And it makes things a lot easier for those companies from a back office perspective. So it simplifies their own management of their telecommunications by utilizing CCI as a full blown part. One of the things that we talked about earlier was our hosted PBX platform. It's an extremely powerful platform. And one of the things I found, and I think this is something that we all want to think about as we're out there in the marketplace. A couple of years ago, during the contact center space, if you looked at how call center solutions worked and contact center solutions worked, there's a lot of different features and whistles and bells that you put into the contact center space that now the hosted PBX realm does just as good, if not better than some of the things that take place in the contact center. I found that in contact center solutions, a lot of large entities are out there charging people anywhere from 95 to $140 a seat for a contact center call center solution. I took our hosted PBX platform and all of the different features and functionality that it has in the marketplace and for the cost of about $21 a month, we're doing the exact same thing that those companies need to have done. And they're paying anywhere from 90 to hundred dollars a month to get done per seat. Our case in $21 per seat, you're saving these guys probably anywhere from 60 to 70% somewhere in that range. And that's, that's an enterprise rate out there that's in the marketplace. It's pretty standard and, and can be utilized 
to save somebody a, a tremendous amount of money. What we encourage is, let us do some demos for you guys on the hosted PBX platform. You can reach out to myself or you can reach out to John. John's on the call well. John is our nationwide channel manager. And we can set up demos, demos for you guys to show you exactly what the hosted PBX platform will do and how robust it actually is. Yeah, and that's actually something that we as advisors do as well. So they would reach out directly to our advisors and can can make those types of introductions. So absolutely, great way to, to try things before you so that you know how it's working. Right, exactly. Also wireless backup. We've had a lot of success in the wireless backup marketplace right now. And we do it through our, our partnership with Verizon. It's the same bulk buy philosophy and we offer our customers the ability to buy based on a nationwide plan where they'll buy multi-gig solutions and utilize that in a backup solution and it'll just kick in when it's needed or if their primary internet connection goes down. So backup solution and from a wireless perspective is one way and the other thing that we've done with our wireless backup is we've combined it with an SD-WAN philosophy. So again, it's constantly looking at the most active network, the best network for utilization that the end user can be doing. And by expanding that into an SD-WAN environment, you basically keep your services up and operational as much uptime as you can possibly get. I mean, if you, if you take that and you look at it, nobody can guarantee 100%, but this is as close to 100% as you're ever gonna be able to experience by combining your wireless backup with an SD-WAN solution. We've done that for several different customers. And I'm gonna go through a case study with you guys where you can see kind of what they were able to achieve by putting a wireless backup plan in. And these are some companies that were currently doing things in, in, in a wireless backup frame for one is public safety, retail, finance, and insurance companies are all utilizing it through our solutions. But the unique one that we had recently was a nationwide fast casual restaurant chain. They were experiencing downtime at several of the different facilities with their internet services. They have over 160 restaurants and from time to time they'd have downtime and they couldn't get their point of sale solutions and their credit card processor systems up and operation. So we proposed a, net, a wireless backup plan and put a, each site with SD-WAN over cable to give them continuous uptime. By doing that and having two dual redundant services in there, they have not experienced an outage since that took place. So now all of a sudden, all the downtime they were receiving has gone away. It's been a tremendous benefit in their reliability because of the network redundancy they're able to experience through our solution. We talked about toll-free routing in the past, and we talked about how we work with different companies. And this gives you guys a pretty good example of, of what we're able to do from a toll-free routing perspective. We do this with several of the companies we work with right now through Technology Source. In fact, about three weeks ago, we turned up a new customer through our partnership with Technology Source. And one of the reasons why they did it was because they wanted to have the ability to utilize a multiple care relationship. And for that particular customer, we bring the toll-free services through our platform. Once it hits our platform, we route the call out to them on, on the most cost efficient plan, plan that we can. So we have two redundant carriers on the inbound leg and we have multiple carriers on the outbound leg to make sure the customer's calls are always up and operational. They're a call center with a contact center. They're a call center company who has a lot of different needs for their toll free services. And what they found was the utilization went up about twofold because they are missing that many calls on their previous network configuration. So they had a lower cost per minute, but they ended up spending more money because they were processing two to three times more calls than they processed in the past, which they found to be a pretty big value add. But in this particular case, what you're gonna see here is you've got three different IBRs. This is a good example of what we can do for our customers. We can put a Verizon Global, where you can see here where, let's take Kansas City as the first example. You got an active Verizon one gig DIA circuit and an active CenturyLink one gig IP VPN circuit. They're privatized solutions, one via IP VPN, the other one via IPsec tunnel, and they're transferring calls through multiple care networks with Verizon and CenturyLink. We tell the SMS database how to point those calls. So let's say that you're a company or you're an agent and you've got a solution out there and you come to you come to Sonya and you come to Stephanie and say, look, I got a call center solution out there and these guys do a tremendous amount of minutes. I'm gonna give you guys what that call detail looks like and I want you guys to tell me what I can do for those guys in a cost saving environment. Stephanie and Sonia will get in touch with CCI. We'll run an analysis for them and show them exactly what that would look like in a two or three carrier environment. So let's say that for example, they're getting calls processed from 305, 225, 2558. And the most cost effective play on that for us is across the scheduling network. So we notify the SMS database, anything that comes across calls that come from that phone number or from that MPNXX 
YYY environment, we'll let, send that call to CenturyLink. The next guy might be a 385-225-1520 call, and the most cost-efficient play for that guy might be on the Verizon network. And we'll tell the SMS database for all the calls that come from that customer region, send those calls down the Verizon network. So a percentage of the calls are going to one carrier, percentage of the calls are going to the other carrier, and we're notifying the SMS database as to how to process those calls, and they're processing them as we tell them to. Say, for example, there's an issue on the Verizon network. I just notified the SMS database, which is a revolving 15 minute window, 24 hours a day. And I say, take the calls that are on this network from this region and send those calls to CenturyLink. And they'll kick those calls to the CenturyLink platform. The customer stays up and operational. As soon as Verizon is back up and they're, and they're in business and they want to process calls again, we run some tests with them. We feel comfortable. We send the customers call. We send those calls back down to the Verizon network and the customer stays up and operational. In this case, you see the one SBC in Atlanta. There's another SBC off to the side where we're, over, where, where we're all at over here, but you'll see how they're pointing into the, three, the two different carrier clouds and they're pointing to each of their IVRs. What we did with this particular case is we set up redundant giggy interfaces in every one of these locations to give these guys constant redundancy. If there's ever an issue on one care network, we go to the other care network for the IP interface as well. We have large customers that say, look, I just want to go direct to carry. I don't want to use your solution or your SPC. I just want to take my SPC and point direct to my carrier relationship. We do that for those companies. We manage the solution for them. We manage the overall network interface for them. We take care of everything soup to nuts for them from a telecommunications perspective. And we just manage that in the back office right. perspective and take care of those care relationships for them. Other companies want to privatize it and come through our network. We provide that as well. So it really depends on what the customer wants to see. We get as flexible as we can based on what their, uh, what their own individual needs are. This is a more simplified version of it. This is how we interface either through the cloud you can take those two lines that say IP private and go private into, into the Genesis cloud that we're, interfa that we're interfaced with right now. Or you can go direct down into ABC company that says, I don't want to go through the cloud. I just want to come straight into you guys and go into your SPCs. Those are your, those are your CCI session border controllers. And then you send the calls out and tell them where to go, whether it's Verizon or CenturyLink. Same thing, interfacing with the SMS database. But you can see how we can work within the cloud or we can work out of the cloud to provide that same cost efficient, network efficient platform for our customers. I've kind of gone through a lot of different things here that we've done that, that we're doing right now in the marketplace. Does anybody have any questions or anything you guys want to, any feedback on, on uh, maybe you have some ideas or some customers that you may be able to look at this and go, boy, I see some, I see some real added advantages here I can put in the marketplace. Yeah, Gene, we do have some questions for you and Chris and John that have come in during your conversations here. Would you like to go ahead and take those now? Sure, we can take some right now. For me, just hearing about your custom billing, I know that's something that we talked about just even in marketing this event, and partly because we've seen that be such a huge winner for organizations. A lot of them are either separating out, they have different divisions, different locations, different departments, and it can be really frustrating for their accounting to keep all of that straight, and as well as all the IT folks who have to manage it and, and report that up. So can you tell us about how, I know you mentioned that you do that, and has that been helpful for you in helping your customers? And do you have any customer examples that have needed that feature? Sure, we, we do that all the time. I'll give you a, a really good example. We have a company right now that's got remote office spaces all across the country. So they'll go out and they'll and they'll create a meet platform where companies can come in and utilize their, their spaces and rent space out on a month-to-month -month basis utilizing those services. So they may have people that are remote and traveling and they don't have offices all over the country. So they set up stuff with companies like a Common Grounds, for example, that goes out and manages multiple rental spaces across the country. In those particular cases, we took that solution and they wanted to have a primary and a redundant backup. So say, look, give me, a, I, want, I want to put a giggy interface with the primary carry and a giggy interface with the backup carry to make sure I'm up and operational at all times. And we take those regions and we say, what's the most cost efficient play for this customer in this part of the country? For example, when they're working out in the Midwest, we found a lot of different interfaces that were solid AT&T interfaces. So we put AT&T in as a primary. Stuff they were doing on the Eastern Seaboard, we put Verizon in as a primary. And stuff they were doing on the West Coast, we put CenturyLink in there as a primary. And we put backup networks in place where CenturyLink was a primary, we, had put a, we might put AT&T as a backup. Where Verizon is a primary, we might put CenturyLink as a backup. 
We ran those across, but we have an inventory of each of their locations and everything that's related to each of those locations. So that when they pick up the phone, if they have a need for a location, they say, look, my Seattle office is having jitter across the back Can you guys look into it. We go to the Seattle office, we see the two circuits that are in place, we find out which circuits acting up and we submit the ticket for them based on that circuit. So they may have, they, these guys actually probably would have five or six different care relationships that, they're, that we're managing for them, but they're getting that invoice based on one build that's a CCI based build and one person to contact that's a CCI based person to contact and we take care of the, all the back office support for them managing those solutions with the multiple carriers that we're interfacing with. It saves them a tremendous amount of time from an accounting perspective. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's that's that's yeah. the key right there. When you can show different departments why this solution is, is better, not only does it improve, you know, our quality, call quality, you know, reliability, redundancy, but hey, accounting team, you don't have this nightmare anymore hey, to each department, here's the benefits. And so I know that's one of the things as we're going in front of our customers is talking to each department and helping them understand how these are going to benefit everyone. So I wanted to ask you one more quick question from one of our audience members here. You mentioned missing calls. You mentioned things that all of a sudden now all these calls are coming in. And so what a huge benefit to an organization to now have this business enablement really and so all of these features and things like that that you're showing us, for me, it's, it's okay, well, what's the business reason for this, right? Like, why do I want all this stuff in place? And, and so when we're talking to the IT folks, it's one conversation, but when we're talking to, say, maybe an executive in the company, they don't want maybe the graphs and the charts and stuff. They just like, so what's the end result? So that's my question from one of the audience. What's the end result of all these measures you're putting in place? Can you just talk about some of the business benefits that a customer would see? I think there's three that you really have to look at. First and foremost, am I more efficient as a company? I've got multiple networks. I'm creating network efficiencies. So my uptime is going to be virtually 100% as, as much as, as close to possible as 100% as, as I can get. So my efficiency as a company and my efficiency on my network interface is going to be broadened and I'm going to, be, I'm going to have better experiences just based on that. Secondly, am I able to drive my costs down? Absolutely. You're going to be able to, you're going to put yourself in a position where you're automatically going to be able to take into effect cost cutting measures and you're keeping carriers to say, look, I've got two carriers on my backbone. I can do the most cost effective carrier across the backbone based on what my analysts at CCI are telling me how to route those calls. So I'm saving money. I'm not only yeah. increasing my network efficiencies, I'm saving- And that's money. good. <laughs> Efficiency, money, savings. I mean, those are, those are the things that a lot of our customers are looking for. We did have a question from a customer. They wanted to know, is your solution some like physical hardware that we're gonna need to be putting on site? Or is that something that is hosted like in the cloud? So I think that was a question that came in. It depends on the situation and what we're looking at with each company is different. Some we work right into the cloud, we work with them in the cloud, and we don't have any equipment on site. Some customers want to have SPCs on site and we put SPCs on site for those guys based on the volume of calls they're going to process and the kind of support that they're going to need. So we'll, we'll take each company, we'll look at exactly what they're doing and we'll put together a plan that, that benefits them in, in the best possible way. So it, it's a moving target, it just depends on what the needs are. If you're talking about companies that are out there and, and we have several customers that will process anywhere from 10 to 15 or 20 million minutes a month in services, they may want their own setup and have their own SBCs in place with us. We'll do that for them. And, and we provide the monitoring solutions and, and the technology solutions on the edge for those guys that they can do those things. We have other guys that maybe do, you know, two or three million minutes a month and they just want to come through our backbone. We provide everything for them here. We interface with them in an IP realm and it's just a public IP interface. And we meet up and we talk and we test those calls thoroughly with them. And once they're up, once they're comfortable with the way those calls are processing, we go live and, and, and we process those calls. So it, it just really depends on exactly what the end user needs are. And we work with, you know, we work with companies and our agent partners to find out through discovery exactly what they're doing. And, and then we put together a best case plan to put in front of them to show them how we can save that money and increase those network efficiencies. Great. And then we did have some questions on just your locations that you service. So one specific was in South America and then another one was Atlanta. So I don't know if 
you could just address those two locations and then any other sort of locations. Also, I did want to point out that we know you guys can service customers with just one bill or hundreds of them, right? And so that's really one huge differentiator that we're not going to see with a lot of the other providers out there. Hey, yes. Sonia, can I answer that question? I think, yes. I think if, you, if you want to say one thing about CCI where we're really good, we're carrier agnostic, right? Yeah. We don't care if it's AT&T. We don't care if it's Verizon. We don't care if it's CenturyLink. We don't care if it's Zayo, GTT, whoever. Whoever's got the best deal out there that's going to best benefit the end user, that's who we're going to use in that particular market, okay? So yeah. we could have an MPLS network with Verizon. We could have multiple DIA sites, one with CenturyLink, one with AT&T, one with Zayo, one with GTT. We could have another wireless backup with Verizon. We could do SD-WAN on top of that. We can put it all. We can use six, seven, eight different providers out there. But a lot of people say it's one throat to choke. I like to put it as one back to pat, okay? So you have one point of contact, you have one person to call, we manage all the services for you, we put it on one bill that you pay, you contact one person to deal with all your multiple services. I love that. I'm a huge one back to Pat fan. I love reappropriating that because it really is to me, it's about that customer service and that was the very first thing you guys mentioned and we know that that's definitely the case because as you said early on in the presentation today, you have customers that have been there and stuck around for many, many years and that's really kind of the sentiment that we need to know that you're they're happy, right? And helping them meet those needs for cost savings and efficiency, that's what it's all about. So we have a lot more questions and I think we're gonna have to start taking some of these offline because I just realized that we're almost going over here. So I just wanted to thank you guys so much for being here today. I wanted to go over really quickly our sourcing as a service steps for anyone on this presentation who wants to reach out. The very first step is just to have a conversation with someone like Stephanie. We have a, like I said, over 200 advisors throughout the US so just reach out we will match you up with an advisor who has a skill set that you need or is in your area depending on kind of what you're looking for from there you'll get expert recommendations and warm introductions to organizations just like CCI who can help you get those goals met and then from there you purchase directly from the companies we are not a middleman we just connect you right there with the company that's going to serve your needs and then we do it all over again and help you again and again. So that's us at Technology Source. Just reach out to us. You can reach out to me at any time. My name is Sonia Moline, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to get these types of education in, into your day. We continue to bring these week after week. Please stay tuned for next week on Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. We will be here same same time, same bat channel. Thank you so much. And thank you for the wonderful uh, comments that we've been getting throughout this. We really appreciate it. And have a great rest of your day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Sonia. Thanks, thank you. All right, bye, Jean.